Now jumping ahead to five days before Tamar left his body, and we started the Kirtan Mela. So the first Kirtans were in his room. He'd been out of Mayapur for many years, maybe about seven years. So two things he wanted to establish when he came back was daily bathing in the Ganga. Uh, daily we would go down just before Brashad, a group of us, and bathe in the Ganga. And he says, for many years I come to Mayapur, but don't bathe in the Ganga, and the Ganga is right here. So as we know, the Ganga is coming from the lotus feet of Vishnu, carried down by celestial airplanes, lands on the head of Lord Shiva, so who wouldn't want to bathe in the Ganga? So he wanted to establish, he says, yes, uh, during the meetings we should all come down and bathe in the Ganga and then go back and take Krishna Prashad. So about 4.30 at 5 o'clock we would meet in his room. So then he decided, because he'd have the mats in the middle, that we'd have a half an hour, an hour of chanting. So the first night I think there was four or five of us and we just started rotating the chanting, he would start, we'd all start like that. Then, of course, the word got out that there was Kirtan in Tamal's room. So the next night, maybe there was 50 devotees, the next night 150, next night a couple of thousand. So it got to the point where we couldn't have the Kirtan anymore in the room, and then it moved down to the Panchatapva Hall. So as far as I know, that was the beginning of the Kirtan Mela. So, um, I can stop there. <laughs> so I was travelling with Tamal in the car uh, the day of his disappearance. So it, it was a funny situation because Tamal was going to leave uh, two or two, couple of days before he left his body. But somehow there was some traffic problems or some protesting or something going on in the city so he decided to change it. And me and my wife were also going to leave a little early, but it was my wife's birthday and she was sort of like, she was a disciple of Tamal Krishnamaraj and sort of shiksha of, um, and to doing a shiksha of Tamal because she liked the intellectual aspect of Tamal. She was intellectual and so they formed a relationship like that. So she thought, well, it's my birthday, my 40th birthday. I'd like to travel and do Delhi. Oh, not Delhi. What's that? Calcutta uh, with Tamal. So then we were travelling in the in the car, and I think it was three quarters of an hour uh, after Krishna. It was uh, three quarters of an hour after we were travelling that the car hit the tree. People go to that tree, and that that's a friend for some people and an enemy for others. So one can form different types of relationships with that tree. So Tamal was in the front, my wife was behind Tamal and I was sitting behind my wife. So no, nothing, nothing with Tamal, there's no simplicity with Tamal. It took half an hour just to put the safety belt on. It's not like most people just hop in the car and put the safety belt on, but not to Mal. First of all, you've got to check the safety belt. He's got to be sitting properly in the car. The safety belt has to be properly, everything has to be harnessed in. So I remember the first part, we were chanting and just talking about uh, what's coming up in Karatuk. We were going to get together at the palace uh, for a couple of months and chant chant me my wife himself and a few others he says he says you two are very attracted to chanting so I want to take you deeper so I don't know what deeper is it's pretty nice at all levels so after we got the safety belt on and we were chanting I think we just went through Shantipur and we were just talking chanting and then all of a sudden there was just a blank and that blank is when the car hit the tree and the next minute the car was rolling in the air, flipped in the air. So I remember becoming conscious again in the air. So I remember just flying in the car and then the car hit the ground. The next day we measured, I think it was about 30 metres. So I think it was hit the tree here and landed in the far corner. So the car landed upside down. So it landed upside down 
and then all the village people came out and Tamar was still upside down because he was with he had a safety belt on so then the villagers took the tip the car up the right way so it was an incredible situation to be in because also I think there was a car behind some some of his disciples were in that car so when the car was upside down his disciples were hysterical and crying and so on and so forth so at the same time the villagers were basically I'm not trying to criticize the villagers were turning the car upside down they're also taking the luggage so I had to somehow or other get to mail out of the car, get my wife out of the car and try and get the luggage. So things were mystically happening very fast and a lot of decisions have to be made. So then I put Tamal on the grass, I, we lay him on the grass and at that particular point of course he was deceased, he had left his body. The, the only cut that Tamal had was just a little cut on his elbow because I've got his jumper. I gave his jumper actually, it's in Singatoka now, there's a little, that's all he had. Uh, of course when they did the autopsy they had to cut the body in different places. Now the most amazing thing is when an acharya or a guru or a saintly person dies in India, they want to do a, a full autopsy because they think someone might have killed the guru. Maybe it's a common thing here. But Jaipataka Maharaj, you got a special lever, letter from the governor or something, he was on the phone. They says, no, just do the basic autopsy on Tamal and my wife and leave it at that. And then, and then the doctor, he came to me and said, actually, uh, the guru is deceased, but your wife is in a worse situation because she only has 10% uh, of surviving because she had her head on the, on the top of the on the top of the taxi. So at that particular point, I think Shiva Ram Maharaj turned up, Niranjana Maharaj turned up, and Bibi Govinda. So they were chanting and helping out. Now when we went to leave the hospital, the villagers wouldn't let us leave. And I thought, you know, so there's all this happening, your wife's left the body, your friend's left his body, and all the, all the villagers crowded around uh, the, what's it called, ambulance. They wanted to see the Guru. They heard that a saintly person had left their body and they were not going to let us leave until they had darshan of Tamal. And we were thinking, this is just not going to happen. You know, they were all going to come on. So what we did is we had Tamal's feet or head at one end. So we just pulled back the covers and we told the villagers, you can have darshan from outside. They had darshan, they're very cordial, and then they let us come back to Mayapur. So that's the disappearance of Tamal Krishna Goswami. We I was actually in uh, Mayapur serving him 2002 uh, for, the, for the last few days. And he changed. It was like he took off the suit as a general and he put on a suit. Well, he didn't have any suit. And he, you know, like usually a, a Madhyama Dikari, uh, it's, you know, he's always preaching, managing, and uh, very, um, uh, you know, they're, they're demanding. But uh, on those few days that I was serving him, he didn't have that spirit. He was just, like somebody said, into chanting. Hare Krishna, and uh, he was preparing for something. Uh, it was a new chapter of his life. He didn't even knew himself what he wanted to do next. And he was keeping having meetings with his god brothers. What should I do next? It was the first time that actually he was bewildered. So that evening, the evening before he passed away, he asked me to, to be with him. And he was packing, it took him about one hour just to pack a suitcase. He was very slow, usually he was very dynamic, very, very slow. It, it was all strange to me, his behavior. Then he said, I want you to do a special service, to go to the Ganga and bathe 
on my behalf. And then uh, there was a few other disciples there. And then he, he had uh, this almira in the room with bundles of rupees, dollars. And he said, what should I do with this? Uh, I said, well, you can't take it out of India. It's illegal to take rupees out of India. And he said, actually, he threw it on the bed. He said, actually, I don't need this money anymore. And then he smiled. He stopped packing and he said, uh, tomorrow I'm going home. It was very, uh, I said, I was, I didn't really went deep, you know, to what he meant. I told, I was a bit more external. I said, since when England is your home? Um, and then he was smiling. So I just felt that those last few days, it was, um, uh, I felt very, very close to him. And even his God brought, and then he told me that the wealth that Srila Prabhupada has left me, the only wealth, is the association of my God brothers and my God sisters. I just wanted to say this because it, it indicates how much he loved his God brothers and God sisters. And of course, his grandchildren, it, the old growth of his con, he was always concerned, not just about his disciples, but the growth of ISKCON from different branches, different gurus. It was very, then the sad part came on the next day. I got a call from Shivram Swami and Bhattichuru Maharaj and I, I, was, I was in the temple and they brought the body here. And, uh, and it was unbelievable. I, I, you know, sometimes you, you hear something but the soul doesn't accept it. It's very difficult to accept that something has happened uh, about someone that you love. And they said, you know, there is no one to do the last rites. We don't want the God brothers to do the last rites. And they, they chose you and Goro Narayan to do, uh, and I think uh, Eka Chakra was there as well. And so they, they put me in charge of the last rites on to wash the body and to dress him up, put on tilak and, and then there was something very interesting. Jayapataka Swami tried to close his eyes and the eyes, they wouldn't close. They were frozen, wide open. I think you were there, Maharaj, isn't it? Ah, there was about 60 sannyasis in the room and they couldn't close it and he had a little smile on his face it was almost like ha 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 to his god brothers you know i i'm gone <laughs> it was very uh, a cheeky smile you know when you see the lord jagannath with big eyes a little cheeky smile that was a beautiful darshan but at the same time you know there you are uh, the body of a dead, you know, of, of the guru. But it could, the, 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 the soul must have still be there around because he wanted to see every one of his god brothers. So we took the body into the Radhamadava temple and every devotee was offering flowers. So we, we had a very uh, fast system. And then they tried again to close his eyes, they wouldn't close. And so they, we brought the body here, um, around the Samadhi, and then put the body in the pit. And then I, I, myself was lowered in the pit, uh, about three meters deep. And I was putting the salt underneath his body. And then when I covered up the body, the, the I didn't want to put the salt in the eyes. So what I did was, oh yeah, Bhattichuru Swami gave a very beautiful cushion, his own personal cushion, 
to put underneath his head. I took two flowers and I slowly closed the eyes and they closed. And Jabadaga Maharaj said, the reason why they didn't close before, because he wanted to see every single devotee uh, before he departed. And then we covered the body with the salt, the muck, and there it goes. And then the rest is history. Krishna 